Welcome back to another episode of Plan Zoo. So this is going to be the last of the tutorials. And I gotta say, guys, like, the tutorials in this game, I feel they're so non-tutorial. <laughs> I mean, I haven't really learned anything from them. Basically, they're just scenarios, but I don't feel like they've taught me anything. I've learned more watching YouTube videos um, and kind of just doing things on my own than these tutorials uh, have done anything for me. Um, but so what we're going to do is we're going to hop in here and we're going to see what this one's all about. And we may do this in a two-part one. Uh, I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's hop into this and see how this goes. So I do already have gold on this. I did this before. I like to do them first. Um, but I don't remember what it was about because I've done this a couple days ago, so we'll just start a new one. Ah, pandas. <laughs> They're my daughter's favorite animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh, well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know, thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So... This zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation. A reputation that you're going to be in charge of maintaining, along with all the uh, general maintaining, too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although... <laughs> Perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you, too. <laughs> Welcome to oh, yes, China. Nancy. <laughs> this is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. So new, in fact, that it's not quite finished. But we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. All right. He just wanted us to look around again. Let's explore the zoo. Obviously, the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. Uh, did you highlight it, lady? Am I over it? No, that's red panda. Okay. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. The tutorial. Oh, okay. The tutorial still it just isn't that good. Okay, where's the baby? Oh, there's the baby. Look at him. So cute. And now enter animal camera mode. Okay, let's just do this. So now, wait a minute. I want to try something. Someone said if you double click. Wait, wait. Don't run off. Hey. Oh, yeah, if you double click, it goes right in the camera. That's Doesn't awesome. Doesn't it just warm the cockles of your heart? So cute. Oh, my Did you goodness. Know <laughs> the giant pandas, or Ileropoda melanoleuca, <laughs> from being awesome. formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears. They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, no. I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first, and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll have to move them into quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. To do that, go to the highlighted habitat, Find the infected animal and then select them to bring up their information panel. All right, so where is this? This stable? Is it in the shelter here? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's just 
flex on this guy. Good. Now choose move and then transfer them into quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Boy, that's not really helping me. Oh, there we go. Oh, phew. That's okay. a relief. Now that we've... Oops. Stop the infection from <laughs> spreading any further. We need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then return to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there? Alrighty, so... In order to build the vet surgery, choose facilities, staff facilities, and then vet surgeries. Okay, we're going to do this with the mouse because it's just quicker. Um that we could probably just East Asian veterinary surgery. Yeah. We could. No, that's not that's not what I wanted. Right there. That's what we want. Okay. And let's just rotate this. There we go. Um, that that is not a good spot for that. Um, well, I guess. So let's go shift and let's just kind of make that level with that. But we really can. I mean, it looks horrible. Uh, okay, let's just do that, I guess. Good enough. Good enough. That's the job. Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Hmm. Yes, diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Okay, I really wish you would highlight this thing earlier. I don't feel like... Sorry, okay. I don't feel like... Select the water long. treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Call yes, mechanic? I don't think you need a degree in mechanics to tell that this thing's thoroughly banjaxed. <laughs> Use call mechanic to bring an expert over to Did fix it. it for us. So, just to explain, water treatment facilities work in a similar manner to power sources, in that they have a radius of influence around them. That means any body of water which is even partly within that radius will be cleaned automatically. Also, like power sources, if they get damaged, that radius of influence will shrink, meaning that it might stop cleaning water sources which were only just within its reach. If you want to check how much of your zoo is covered by your water treatment facilities, then there's a heat map you can use to see the coverage. That way, you can quickly spot problem areas and rectify the issue. Good work. Now that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport rides, spins, benches, signs, and See, like, as she, you already she's know, talking about something. Barriers. I guess it's important, but I mean, it's all now, I'll very, be honest, very I'm basic. I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research. So head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. All right, Tommy, you are up, my friend. Let's go. What are we? Border telosis, is that what we're doing? Lovely so. job. Yeah. Okay. Once that research is complete, right, so there's I expect a gold we'll send that disease packing in no time. Locate workshop. Whew. That was a close run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. 
just a momento. Right. Now that we've got all our urgent tasks in hand, we can start to focus on the guests and improving their time in the park. You see, you can also do research into new and improved guest facilities, transport rides, as well as new types of barrier and other things via the workshop. I've highlighted the workshop for you. So head over there, select it, and yeah, then did choose it, Nancy. view workshop. <laughs> we got it all done. One step ahead of you. Great oh. stuff. Okay. That research will take Ooh. a little while, so <clears throat> let's have a look at something else in the meantime. Because we've had some good news. Alrighty, is that going to clear? Locate the highlighted area. Oh, okay. Adopt the place it to get the pandas. That we're allowed to adopt more giant pandas. The authorities have given us three females to help with our breeding program. Even so, I'm sure you know how notoriously difficult it is to get pandas to breed, so we'll have to be patient. Our current giant panda habitat is full to the brim, but luckily we've already got another habitat ready to go. But before we move our new pandas in, they'll need to go through quarantine. Of course, we can't do that until we've accepted them. So open up Animal Trading and go into the Animal Reward section. All right, so let's just select all these guys. Just choose Transfer to Animal Storage next to each of the pandas, and they'll be sent there. Oh, okay. Finally, right. we can send them from Animal Storage to Quarantine. To do that, just select them in Animal Storage, then Send to Zoo. Then choose the zoo's quarantine facility. Don't worry, I've highlighted it for you so you can find it easily. There we go. That was easy enough. Oh, it's getting dark and it is raining. While we wait for them to clear quarantine, you should set up their new habitat so they feel at home in there. I'll also need you to bring over one of the male pandas from our other habitat, but because without him, we're not going to have much of a breeding program, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him oh. over and get everything set up for your That's pandas. A male. That's a female, I mean. There's a male. Okay, so we're going to... Move him to this spot. Okay. Okay, and a feeding station. Okay, you know what? We need to change the time here because I'm not liking this. I need I need daytime. There we go. Okay, so we need to add a feeding station. Actually, you know what? Is this already set up for pandas? Doesn't have the animals in it yet. Hmm. Okay. Feeding station. Filter items. Use filters to only show items for giant panda. Is that what we have? Species. I just want to make sure that that's actually... Check? Oh, giant panda. There we go. Okay, so what do we need? We need a feeding platform. So let's... Put this here. I want that above ground, right? Okay, there we go. So we need to add food enrichment. Let's see. Go down to here. Let's zoom in. We need a roll feeder. So let's let's put this over here. I think. There we go. And we need toy enrichment, of course. Ooh, we got a couple things we can do here. Let's do... What is this? Fire hose ball. You know what? Let's put one of these in up here. I think this will be cool. Now, the one thing I remember from this is the terrain welfare and the plant welfare is kind of difficult. Okay, so what we need to do... 
is click on the panda, I believe. Where is he? He likes to hide in here a lot. Yeah, there he is. Okay, so hard shelter is good. Terrain is no good. Grass, short. There's too much long grass, not enough short grass. Okay, perfect. So, uh, what I will do with this as I will use the mouse for this because it just works better. So grass short and bump that up. Let's bump that up. And let's just start. Bring that there, drag that over there. So yeah, I'm still not like great with the mouse. Okay, there's still way too much long grass. Okay. Is there long grass over here, maybe? Okay, that looks good. But now, let me just go over into the other side. And there we go. Because I would rather have that better than that. Okay. <clears throat> so now increase the plant welfare. Now this is difficult because there's a lot that we need to do here. Uh, Asia. And let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that and that. That doesn't make them too happy. Okay. And... Asia.
given a clean bill of health. You'd best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible, because animals will only breed if they're happy. Oh, bless. <laughs> I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. <laughs> right, while they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else, eh? Dear me, there's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well, unless you hit pause. Okay, I think it's time I taught you all about work zones. I know. They don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see, work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habitats or tasks within the zoo, so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. So, let's start by creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so they know to look after the new pandas. To do that, go into the access menu, then zoo management, then head into the staff overview tab and choose work zones. Now choose new work zone. To set up your new work zone, I'll need you to select the highlighted habitat gate, staff room and keeper hut. Oh, and don't forget to name it something useful. <laughs> Once you're done, just go ahead and exit the work zone creator. Now let's hire a new keeper and assign them to our new work zone. We don't want them getting distracted by other goings on in the zoo. Go on, hire one. Then, select your new keeper to bring up their information panel and go to their Employment tab. You can assign them to your new work zone from the drop-down menu. There you go. Now your keeper will focus their attention on our new pandas. <laughs> oh, and just so you know, all types of staff can be assigned work zones. Just make sure that they have access to all the buildings that they need. Oh, and one last thing. You might find it faster to assign them from the work zone section of the staff overview screen. That'll save you having to chase around selecting your staff one by one. Oh, it sounds like the brand research has been completed. <laughs> You should collect your rewards, and you can do that by going back into the mechanic research. Now that we've got our lovely new Just a Memento shop designed, you should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way the guests won't miss it on their way out, and we won't miss out on their money.
Ever so wonderful that is. Anyway, I'm just off for a moment, but I'm sure I'll have some more jobs for you to look at shortly. Oh, those pandas look just adorable. <laughs> I can see why people keep foolishly forgetting that they're wild bears. And good work on that new gift shop branding. Just a memento. <laughs> Very clever. Much better than our old overpriced gifts branding. <laughs> I'm all for truth in advertising, but it was perhaps a little <laughs> on the nose. Back as promised. Right, I'd like you to increase the number of different species in the zoo. Now, you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area. And if you're wondering how you're going to fit them all in, then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. Just make sure to check the Zoopedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g. don't mix lions with antelopes.
to well, Madon. It seems that with our new pandas and other species, we've attracted lots and lots of new guests. Let's work on making sure those guests are kept happy. That means making sure they have great views of the animals, lots of places to buy food and drink, and, well, lots of places to get rid of food and drink. <laughs> Toilets. You should think carefully about where to put your guest facilities, though. For instance, don't put all of the food shops in the same place. Just look at how the guests are distributed around the park and put your facilities where they'll be needed the most. As long as you remember to pay attention to what the guests are thinking, you'll soon have a handle on what everyone wants. Okay, so... Now we need a place for food. Again, this is all tutorials that really don't help. I mean, this is all stuff that should be designed into your zoo um, before it's like this. Like, so guys, if you're building a zoo, don't get it like this before you decide to put food in. I mean, this is so cramped right now. And now I have to try to figure out where the hell I'm gonna put food in. So I guess this will be a good spot, even though um, <laughs> not really, but okay, fine, we'll just do that. So yeah, the, the, in the way tutorials go, I'm not fond of this at all. Like, I'm not fond of, of how they do this at all, actually. So we need to put down a chief beef. I want one that's already built. Planet Zoo, um, Bernie's. Chief Beef. They don't have a Chief Beef already made. Do I have? I have blueprints on. I mean, okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. We just put that down. If this was my zoo, I'd make it look better. But that's okay. Um, Let me put that there. And then they need a Cosmic Cow Milkshake. She said don't put them close together, but... Uh, look it. I don't know where she wants me to put these things. There we go. And then we can do an Information Center probably. In the same spot here. Information Center. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about making it look pretty. And then we need to place a toilet block. So we could probably do all this stuff. Right here, I'd imagine. Um, oh, of course they have... They have this. That's crazy. Okay, let's do that, I guess. That's not going to work. Okay, wait a minute. Let's, uh... <laughs> Let's take the angle snap off here. Let's put the toilet there. Okay, they can get into the toilet, right? They can get into that. Oh, they can get into this? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So now we need to place five bins. That's... Should be easy enough here. Facilities... Uh, which one was it? The benches. Uh, staff facilities... No. Bins. There we go. Okay. Two of those. One. Two, three, four, 
Four. Uh, and we'll put it right there. Okay. Is that there? And let's go trenches. Why does that do that? Three, four. Like I said, this is my zoo. I'd be more oh, careful with that. But like the inspector's almost here. Now, I fully expect you to pass with flying colors. Anything less, and I might have to organize a little job exchange scheme for you with whoever's mucking out the pandas. It. I don't know what the hell happened at the end. Um, I, I focused in on the inspector, and then when I left at it, the whole zoo was just gone. But uh, we did get the gold star for that. We, we got everything uh, up to perfection for her standards, I guess. And that is it. That is the end of the tutorials. So now we actually have uh, Eye of the Taiga, and that's the next one in the uh, the career mode. But now that I got the tutorials done, we will be focusing Woo! more on the <laughs> franchise and the sandbox mode um if you guys are watching this you've probably already seen a little tutorial that i did on how to build uh, an enclosure for your buildings um so we did that and so now we can actually get into the meat and potatoes of the game here uh that we finally got this this career mode uh tutorials done i just wanted to show you guys that and honestly i kind of regret it because the tutorial is just really one of the worst tutorials i've ever seen in any game it really doesn't tell you anything at all so guys with that i'm really enjoying this game if you haven't noticed we have a ton of content um for this game coming out for my fans of the other stuff burn bus and uh the driving simulators no worries that's not going anywhere it's just right now i'm all into this game um we're going to be doing a mix of both so i'm not i'm not going to stop doing content on this game i'm absolutely just loving it i hope you guys are enjoying it too if you are let me know in the comments and again, join the Discord. I would love to see what you guys are building. Um, and let me know if you guys are uploading anything to the Frontier Workshop. I've uploaded one thing so far, I think. So uh, anytime I make something really cool uh, that I think is up to my standards, I will upload it to the Frontier Workshop. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time.